Okay, good morning class. Okay, so today we're looking at um, control test 2. Normally you guys write uh, one control test which is in term 1, but because of that it was a COVID year, that uh, test was shortened. So this was, uh, that is why we have had a control test 2 in this year. But anyway, the topics are still relevant. So let's go with it. So the first question says, eight teams compete in a distance competition and are awarded scores from two judges. That's a dancing, dancing competition. The scores out of 20 for each team are given below. So, Charge 1 gave um, team A 18 and then Charge 2 gave 15 and so on. Team E got 5 and from Judge 1 and Judge 2 and then G got 10 from Judge 1 and 8 from Judge 2 and so on. Okay. Determine the equation of the least squares regression line of the scores given by the two judges. So the least squares regression line follows the formula y is equal to a plus b. Okay. Okay, so um, we need to, um, what's the name, a calculator? Program a calculator, so we can mode 2 for stat, 3 for 2 for B, uh, for A plus B. So um, in the first column, we're going to have judge. One's uh, reading says uh, one, uh, 18, 4, 6, 8, 5, 7, 8, 18, 4, 6, 8, 5, 12, 10, and 14. Judge so 2, for the first person, 18 corresponds with 15, 4 corresponds with 6, um, 6 with 3. 8 and 5, 5 and 5, 12 and 14, 10 and 8, and uh, 14 and 15. And then press AC, we'll press AC, shift, number 1, 5 for regression, and 1 for A. Is that correct? It's negative. So y is going to be negative 0, comma, uh, 0, 3, 1. Shift 1, 5 for regression, 2 for b. Is that 0, comma, 9, 2, 5. Okay. The ninth team arrived late and was awarded a score of 15 from Judge 1. Estimate the score that might have been assigned by Judge 2 to the nearest whole number. So in other words, Judge 1 was your x. So y is equal to negative 0, 0, 0,031 plus 0, 0,925 times 15. So it's going to be negative... 0, 0, 31 plus 0, 0,925 multiplied by 15. You 13, 8. So it's approximately approximately 40. Okay. As you can see, they are within here the same. What's the correlation coefficient between the two judges? We can see if the um, judgment are in line, if they are testing on the same thing, of course. Okay, One might be testing the foot movement and the other one maybe the hips or whatever. I don't know how the stuff works. So, um, shift one. 
both regression or three for R. So if they're judging on the same account, what can we say about this correlation or the relationship between the two judges' uh, scores? It is very strong correlation. Can you see that? And it is positive, which means to say as the one increases, the other one also increases. Okay, so which means to say the um, strong correlation. But that wasn't the question. Okay. People, let's look at question two. Question two, this is not what you guys will be writing on, but I'm going to do it anyway. So here we are told that um, A, which is zero and one, uh, A and one, where A is greater than zero, which means to say A is positive. If A is greater than zero, A is positive. Okay? Is a point on circumference of a circle, so you've got a circle, you've got A, which is A and one, With the equation of circles, the equation is x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 2y minus 4 is equal to 0. So you're going to, of course, complete the square. Why? Because they, they, we must write it in the form of a, uh, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equal to r squared. That's the form we wanted. Okay? Why? So that we can draw the center from it and the length of the radius as well. Okay? So it's going to be x squared plus 4x plus a number plus y squared minus 2y plus the first number and it's equal to, you take 4 over the equal sign, so it's 4 plus the first number plus the second number. That's the number in, this, in this case, it's going to be 4 times half, which is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times half is negative 1, negative 1 squared is of course 1. Okay. And there is our perfect square triangle. Remember that these numbers will always be positive because it's from a square. So it will be x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 9. So what is m which is the center? Negative 2 and 1. And then has the radius of 3. Because r, this is r squared. So therefore your radius is okay. Let's look at the next question. It says calculate the value of A. But people we know that A is on the circumference of the circle. So I can either sub it into that equation there or in this way. Okay? So I'm going to sub it into that equation. So it's simply that your x and your y. So we have a plus 2 squared plus 1 minus 1, which is? That's 1 minus 1. 0. Okay, equals 9, so that's gone. So I introduce square root. If I introduce square root, what must I not forget? Plus minus. Uh, in this case, So x is equal to minus 2 plus minus 3. So x is equal to minus 5 or minus 2 plus 3 is 1. Well, what's the condition? A had to be positive. So since a, um, a is greater than 0, why do I have an x here? It's not going to be that one. Okay. Therefore, a is equal to 1. Now write down the equation of the tangent. at A. Okay, so for two marks people know me, they ask you to calculate the equation of the, of the tangent. There's normally four marks, okay? So if you see if it's one or two marks, know that the line is parallel either to the x-axis or y-axis, or they're being unfair, okay? Because um, to, to, to determine the equation is normally quite a bit of math, um, calculation of the to it. So if I turn this, okay, that's not a good thing representation of what I want to show you, but um, we look here, what you notice, the y values are the same, which means to say that the y values are the same, then this is what it's going to look like, so if this is minus 2, this is of course on the other side, minus 2 and 1, 
and one in one. This is the m which is negative to it. Remember that is your m. Right? And the initial radius of 3. Okay. But they want the equation of the tangent. So the tangent is going to go through like it. Which of course is in the parallel to your uh, y axis. Can you see that? So what's the equation of this line? x is equal to 1. And that's our answer to 2.123. Okay. If you had gone, if you determine the gradient here, you'll see you'll get the gradient of zero, of zero here. Okay, anyway. Before that said, let's look at 2.2, the more analytical. Consider the sketch below. So, we are given, was that a B or a D or what? an E? Determine the coordinates of the midpoint of EF. Okay, so the midpoint of EF, that is 2 to 1. 2.2.1. The question that I remember can be found in the description box below. So the midpoint of EF is going to be uh, approximately, not some, let's call that M for now as the midpoint. So it's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So if I make this x1, y1, of course, is x2, y2. Okay, so that's going to give you a minus 6, minus 6, uh, plus 6. Minus 6 plus 6 over 2. And then 5 plus negative 1 over 2. So the gradient is going to be 0 and 2. Now, the gradient in the midpoint. Which also makes sense here, as I almost drew it on the, or on the y-axis. So it's 0 and 2. Okay. Then the question says, calculate the size of theta. If you look at this theta, why is it theta for now? Yeah, but anyway, that is a 0 and 2 theta. Theta, uh, theta, which is there. Okay, and it's for 5 marks. Okay, so from here we can see theta 2.2.2. That your theta won't be able to be calculated straight away as B. However, we can calculate alpha, we calculate beta, and we know that beta is equal to alpha plus theta. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposites. Not so. But let's take this off. We have got to need the space here. So I'm going to go with the beta first. So tan of beta is equal to the gradient of uh, the gradient of EF. Okay, so you know EF. Eh? How do you calculate the gradient? Change y over change x. It's negative 1 minus 5 over 2 over 6 minus minus 6. We give me an answer of uh, 6 over 12, which is negative 1. Okay, so beta is equal to equals. They say arc 10 or shift 10 of negative 0.5 to 26,56 I'm not sure that, that that's in the radians okay make sure that the calculator is in degrees that's clear yeah okay so you say shift 10 oh it looks like an arc not an arc it's a negative 0.5 which is the same answer I got, plus 180. Gives you an angle of, an obtuse angle of 153, comma, uh, 4, 3 degrees. Okay. Then, your alpha angle, so tan of alpha is equal to the gradient of uh, DE. Which is simply a 
5, the change of the change of x is 5 minus minus 4 is plus 4, over minus 6 minus minus 3. Okay, so that gives me an answer of um, 9 over negative 3, which is negative 3. So your alpha angle here is simply of 10 of negative 3. Negative 71, you add 180 to it. It's an obtuse angle of 108.43. Okay. Now to get the theta angle, we see the theta is equal to the beta minus alpha, or beta is equal to theta plus alpha. To exceed the angle of triangle. So your beta minus alpha, so it's 1, 1, sorry, 1, 5, 3, comma, 4, 3, minus 1 of 8, comma, 4, 3. So it's going to be 153, comma, 4, 3, minus, gives you 45 degrees, not so. So this angle is 45. Okay. calculate that length and that length, we already have the included angle. Can you see that? Which is the area rule. So we now have the area rule. Area is going to be of uh, EF times ED, sine of angle. But EF, so then we use the distance formula. So that will simply be um, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so it's going to be minus 6 minus minus 3 squared plus 5 minus minus 4 squared. So that's going to give us an answer of oops, squared of minus 6 uh, plus 3 is negative 3 squared. I'm going to put it as 9 plus, and that's going to give you 9 squared, which is 81. Okay, that's 3 root 10. Okay, which is just in EF. 3 root 10, so that's in there. And then the length of uh, ED. The same formula. So it's going to be um, minus 6 plus 3 squared. And then 5 minus minus 4, which is plus 4 squared. Same thing. I actually said negative 6 minus, okay, so this is actually ED.
Okay. Yes? Sorry? Then the 55 was a mistake. I think. But they've got the same formula there. Um, yeah, basically, this is UBI and So I worked out ED. And ED was 3 root 10. Sorry? Root 90, which is 3 root 10, so that is in order. Okay. And this one here? Root 180. Okay. And then you got the root 90 and the root 180 and sign the 45. Right, then there's the 55 is in a mistake. Okay. Right, the next one, our favorite, we want to just leave it up, one of those ones. So here we are told that, so to be. Okay, so here we are told in question three, Wrap this up quickly. Yeah. So um, we are told that in the sketch TP is a tower. Okay. The foot of the tower P and the point Q, which is here, and R are in the same horizontal plane. So you're going to assume this on the ground. Okay. From R. From R, the angle of elevation, the one that's going up, this angle here, and the top of tower is X. Then we are told that QRP, QRP, which is this here, is per 150, and then RP, Q is Y. Then we are told that PR is lowercase r, okay. PQ is lowercase r. So everything that we said is in the, uh, in the introductions on the diagram. Okay, so let's go. The question says, prove that PT is equal to the story. Okay, move that over. P. Okay, so if we look at PT, PT is this thing here. So we look at the, the basically in between the two triangles, why? Because that is level case R. So I must use RP and TP. So we got a triangle looking like this. Okay, so in triangle, um, TRP. You don't have to write this and you don't have to draw this. Okay, I'm just putting it right here. Apart here. It's a right triangle, so I can use sine, cos, tan, and, and area to be half a base time sign, if needed. Because it's a right angle triangle. So, as we said, you must use these two. So which sigmatic function uses opposite and adjacent? Tan. So I say tan of x is equal to opposite, which is tp, over adjacent, which is rp. Remember they want the tp as a subject of the form, as uh, the subject. So we make tp the subject of the formula. So tp times 1 is tp, that will be rp tan x. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Another next question, but now for the next triangle. So now in triangle, RPQ. So I'll just draw that here. Again, we don't have to draw this. I'm just simplifying the story here. There's Q and this is R. And this is um, R 150. Okay, so what we notice here is that we need to use this here because that's the link between the two triangles. We have many angles here, so it's definitely sine rule, but however I need angle Q. But we know that angle Q is going to be 180 minus 150 plus 1. 
Okay. Why? Because why 150 plus y plus q equals 180 sum of triangles. Do I need a reason here? No reason required. Why do I leave it in the bracket there so that I can apply a reduction formula easily? Okay. Let's carry on. We now say, okay. For the sine rule, it's going to be sine. I'm definitely going to use R, so it's going to be sine 150. Over R is equal to sine of. We'll pick this up, which is 180. Minus 150 plus Y. And this is all over. RP. Okay. I need to make RP the subject of the formula so that I can replace that RP. You see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up, that down, that up. So RP is equal to R. Now 180 minus that will give you 180 minus in second quadrant, sine is positive. So it's going to be sine 150 plus 1 over sine 150 in the denominator. So now it implies, let's put it on the side, that I'm going to reduce, I'm going to take the sine expansion here using the, the, the sine compound angle. So we've got R into. Now sine alpha plus beta is going to be sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cos alpha. So it's going to be sine 150 cos y plus sine y cos 1. And this is all over. This is not odd p. Sine 150 is going to be sine 180 minus 3. So this is also going to be 180 minus 3. This is also going to be 180 minus 3. So that will simply be R into, that's going to be positive sine 30, cos y. It's going to be negative cos 30 times sine y. is going to be negative sine y cos 30. This is all over. Um, sine of 30. Okay. So of course I'm going to use a special angles here. Make it the habit of writing it on the side for whichever special angle you need to use. So it's going to be R. So it's going to be half cos Y minus root 3, which is that thing, cos 30, over 2 sine y. And this is all over R. Okay. So if I divide something by R, it's the same as multiplying it by 2, the numerator by 2. Okay. Or you can take out the half as a common factor, and then cancel the halves out anyway. It's going to give you exactly the same thing. Okay, but in essence, the half is gone. Okay, so it's going to be, well, multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2 is also the same thing. I just multiply this whole story by 2. So it's going to be R into, now a half times 2 is 1. So it's going to be cos y. And root 3 over 2 times 2 is going to be negative root 3. Sine y. And this is all over. Half times 2 is 1. So that's gone. We can write over 1. And this is what RP is equal to. Okay, it's a bit messy, no? So RP is equal to this whole story. This is RP. Okay. So what we now do is we replace... RP in that equation with the story. Okay. So my equation now reads. Whoops. Don't do us Netflix now. 
right? So now we know that TP, so as I say, therefore, uh, TP is equal to RP, which is the story here, which is R into cos Y minus root 3 sine Y times tan X. You all should agree that this here is exactly the same. Okay. Now it's a bit messy, but you guys you will see the memo is a bit it's written out a bit more logical. Okay, because I will cramp the space here. Yeah? If you write it out neatly, one below the other in the order I gave it to you, it should also make more sense. Okay. I don't want to linger too long with this, because I don't want the video to be too long as well. Okay. Real question four. We got uh, what's this? Uh, calculus. 4.1. If f of x equal to 4x squared plus x minus 1, determine if prime x from first principles. So what do we do for first principle? Formula. If prime x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So if f of x if f of x is 4x squared plus x minus 1. That is your f of x. Then f of x plus h, wherever I see an x, I put a x plus h. So x plus h squared plus x plus h minus 1. So it's going to give me x squared, so it's 4x squared. That times that times 2 is going to be positive 2xh plus 4h squared plus x plus h minus 1. Now we like terms. People remember, do not forget to write the limit. If you drop the limit at any point, you will lose the mark. Okay. So it's going to be 4x squared plus 2xh plus 4h squared plus x plus h minus 1 minus. If of x is the story here. So it's 4x squared plus x minus 1. And this is all over h. We've got the limit. As h approaches 0. Get the little of this bracket here. So going to give you 4x squared plus 2xh plus 4h squared plus x plus h minus 1 minus 4h squared minus x minus 1 or plus 1. And this is all over h. So negative 4h squared plus 4h squared cancel. Plus x minus x cancel minus 1 plus 1 cancel. You'll we'll see what are we left with? We are left with 2xh plus 48h squared plus h. You'll notice that h is a common factor. Even if there was something else a common factor, I would have only taken h out. Otherwise, you'd have to multiply it out again. h is a common factor. It's 2x plus 4h plus 1. I had a h earlier. Oh, well. So that cancels. Not so. Did we ever see h after that? Zero. That answer is simply 2x plus 1. And it can be confirmed if I had applied the rules there to be. Whoops. I made a mistake somewhere. The answer should have been 8x. Oh, yeah, here's my mistake. When I square that out, I got 2xh. Multiply the 4 in, I suppose I have gotten 8. So my mistake is there. Could I check? Otherwise, I would have lost the mark. Okay? Don't be like me, okay? You guys are better than me. Right, you guys understand? Right, let's carry on. 4.2.1 Determine dy over dA What does that mean? If I need to determine the derivative with respect to A Alright, so let's go So is that in the form of AX to the exponent N? Yes If I can apply the derivative straight So dy over dA Please pay careful attention to the story Okay, when you apply the derivative You must show the change so 2 times 2, of course, is 4ax, and then the derivative. Oh, no. 
We are actually differentiating A, not the X. Can you see that? So, what is the derivative of, of A? What is the derivative of, of A? It's going to be 1. Like the derivative of X. What is the derivative of X? It's 1, not so. So, the derivative of A is 1. So, if I apply the derivative here on A, you are left with 2x squared. The derivative of A is 1, so it's all. Okay. They almost caught us out, but not yet. Okay. Here we go. Big D here. Of X. So what do we have to do here? Let's first get in the form of AX to the N. So what do we have? D of X. Each one of its own, of course. So it's going to be X over. The cube root of X can be written as X to the third. So it's X to the third minus 1 over X to the third. Okay. When you divide your bases of the same, you subtract the exponents. 1 minus the third is 2 thirds. Minus, bring that up, it becomes X to the negative to the third. And at this point, I can apply the derivative. So 2 over 3 times 1 is 2 thirds minus 1 is negative a third. My negative a third times negative 1 is positive. Minus 1, and that's going to give you negative 4. The question did not say an item with positive exponents. But if you wanted, you could have gone further. That belongs to the denominator, so it's going to be 2 over 3x to the third. Plus, there's a naturally over 1 that also goes down. So that would be 1 over x to the 4 over. Yes. Yep, another mistake. So I suppose they have gotten a third. Day. Not so. Yes. They have to slow it down a bit. No? Thank you. Sorry about that. Number 4.3, we are asked to draw a sketch of the function f of x equal to negative x cubed plus 6x squared plus 36x minus 216. Clearly showing all intercepts with the axis and station B points. Okay, good morning, class. So today we're looking at uh, cycle of these two. Of uh, 2020. Normally cycle of these two is done, is done in term 2. Okay, but some, for some reason it's in August, this was the, it's after the lockdown, the COVID lockdown, okay. I think there's a question that I didn't answer yet. We didn't do the recording, I think the phone cut out. Yeah. So I'm going to redo this one and then we're going to do the next paper, okay? So draw a sketch of the function f of x equal to negative x cubed plus 6x squared plus 36x minus 216. Clearly showing all the intercepts with the axis and the stationary points. So, so firstly, we know that that is negative. So the graph is, we're going to look at the shape the graph is first going to go down and up. Then we're going to look at our x-intercept. What do you do for the x-intercept? We get y equal to 0. So 0 is equal to negative x cubed plus 6x squared plus 36x minus 216. Then we divide by negative 1, of course. So it gives you 0 is equal to x cubed uh, minus 6x squared minus 36x. Plus two one six. So what we do now is we find the value for which the equation will be equal to zero. 
So we start with, we get first got answer cubed, minus 6 answer squared, minus 36 answer plus 2 answer. So we start with 1, and we go to negative 1, we lo we're looking for 0, okay? Six k by zero. So now we know therefore six plus uh, six uh, x equal to six is a factor. So it's going to be x minus six. So we go zero. So x times what is x cubed is x squared. Negative six multiplied by what is positive two one six is negative fifty six. I think. Uh, two one six divided by six. Yeah. And we got plus. Alright, so to get negative six x squared, we we'll multiply that. I'm going to get negative six x squared plus, and that's another way I'm going to get the x squared. The x squared is equal to negative six x squared. You see that cancels, so k x squared is equal to zero. So it, so k is equal to zero. Alright, so k is zero. can factorize yes the difference of two squares. So x minus six into x plus six, x minus six. So we've got x equal to six or x equal to negative six. Okay, then we work out our y intercept. What do you do for the y intercept? x equal to zero. So your y is equal to the little function negative two and six. Okay. Then after we work out our turning point, so it's f prime x is equal to negative three x squared plus twelve x plus this is. See that equal to zero. So x is one of the values has to be six. Or three is going to give you um, twelve, two in the negative. I think. Let's just check. Not vectors. No. So it's negative three. I'm going to use a quadratic formula or the time number factorization. Six and negative two. Is what do we do there after? We sub f of 6 into the equation, original equation, I get an answer of 0, as that was a factor, and f of minus 2 as well. So we say uh, negative 2. Okay, so we need to allow me to do that, so it's a negative answer squared. Um, plus 6 answer squared. Plus 36 answer minus 216 gives you negative 256. Okay, so that's going to give you negative 2 and negative 256. And of course, 6 n. So let's look at the graph. So it's going to cut x at 6. And at minus 6. Okay, the graph is first going down and up. Your axis of symmetry, not your axis of symmetry, but your turning points is on this point here. 
So it's either like it or like it. And it's negative 2, which is approximately there. And a negative 2, it turns at a very low value of a negative 256. As you can see, this is by approximation. We draw from our turning points. The graph is going to turn here. Okay. And this point here, of course, is going to be a negative 2, 1, 6. You always see me write this in last. Okay. So as we say, it's approximation. All right. That is 4.3. Question 5, they want to know now how many four-digit codes can be created if the first character must be a letter and the remaining three characters must be digits that may be repeated. So it's a four-digit code, so it's four bits. How many options do I have for the first bit? Must be a letter. How many letters are there? 30? 26. How many digits are there? 10. From 0 to, to 9, there are 10 digits. Okay. So it's going to be 10 by 10 by 10. So it's going to be 26,000 different um, combinations that can be created. Okay. Any confusion? No? So that basically brings us to the end of um, the control case or cycle case 2 of 220.